Hello, friend! Our drawing project today is going to be this cute kawaii style pun, peas out. Now, you look at this drawing and it may have so many different layers and textures going on, but don't worry, we're gonna take it step by step. We're gonna do the entire process, the sketching, the coloring, the, uh, the shading and all, and then this finishing touches. So in the end, you're gonna have the complete drawing and something else that we are going to focus on in this workshop is how to do hand lettering. This is something that I get asked often, like how do I add a text and letters to my art? So that is going to be the focus of our uh, tutorial today. Step one, sketch. Let's sketch out our kawaii pan. Now, the drawing is actually pretty simple here. Uh, what, we, what we're really gonna zero in on is the lettering that goes along with the drawing. So the drawing is, you know, let's just get right into it and uh, we'll, we'll work through all of the details as we go. So for sketching, I have my pencil brush. This is very similar to the Dervin brush that comes for free with Procreate. I just made a few tweaks and you can download all of my favorite brushes. You know, this is like 99% of my art is created using these brushes uh, and you can download them below the video. So I'm going to grab this pencil brush and let's say a purple color. It doesn't really matter, just something contrasty. And I have mine set at 54%, 54%. I actually have a little marker set up. So if you like scroll to a specific size you like, you can click this plus sign and it'll lock in that size so that you can always go back to it. Just speed up your workflow a little bit. So I've got my 54% and look, I can do like a pretty light line. And if I need to, I can actually do a really thick line or even sketching line. I find this really, really useful. So <laughs> I've got my reference for later. Uh, let's do two P's, right? So make sure you are on the new layer and draw a circle, hold the pencil, let Procreate complete the pencil, put your finger down about this size. Then if you click on here at the top, you can keep on editing and let's move it out sort of over here. This might be too big, but it's okay. We'll do this later. Now I'm actually going to just copy and paste this circle to make sure we have the same size and it's easy. Um, let's make it smaller. Yep, this is about right. Okay, so to copy and paste, I like to do a three finger swipe down and say duplicate. This is the fastest way I found to do this. So let's have our piece overlap a little bit, you know, Let's say this one is behind that one, so we'll just go ahead and erase this part. And for the eraser, I like to use just a smooth outline. Done. Okay, so there's going to be some other elements here. Let's lightly sketch them in. I'm going to put a new layer just so that if I can, like, if I want to move stuff around. So this P is going to have a little hat on top. And hats, you know, it's pretty hard to draw. So I actually got a reference image, which I'll share with you, uh, that you can make your life a little bit easier. But something like this, it's gonna look like, you see it's wrapping around the P and it's gonna, it's like one of those uh, streetwear inspired hats. Uh, this whole drawing is inspired by graffiti. So I'm looking to merge graffiti style, street, art style and kawaii style. Yes, I believe they can coexist. <laughs> um, so yeah, something like this. This doesn't look correct, but no worries. We're gonna look at a reference. This is just giving me the composition. And then here I wanna have a hand that's giving a, like a peace sign. So I'm just gonna like rough it in, you know? <laughs> it's gonna look nothing like the hand, but no worries. Really doesn't matter right now something like this, right? So just figuring out the size. So maybe I want the hand to be a little bit bigger. So select it and I can just resize it. This is why it's good to work on different layers. So 
this layer is independent of the layer below. Let's see. Mm, I would say roughly about here is good. And now right away I'm thinking of the composition of the drawing. So I'm just going to take everything and move it over just a little bit because there's more space here than there is here. So I'm going to select all of the layers we've used so far by swiping to the right, grab my selection tool and position it just where I want it. And in fact, Procreate is going to help me uh, because I have the snapping option turned on at the bottom. You see snapping? It's actually telling me where the center is. So very nice. Thank you, Procreate. And now let us block in where the text is going to go. So definitely a new layer here. So for the text, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, like text really is just another element to your drawing. It's just like the hand It's just like the hat. It's shapes. It's nothing more than just shapes. You know, some people get really worried about hand lettering and think that it's something very scary, but it's actually not. And I need to give a shout out to Stefan Kunz. I did a course with him on hand lettering and that has really helped me um, get more confident with hand lettering. So what I'm going to say here is P's out and then a little yo, <laughs> you know, to go uh, along with this street vibe. Um, but now the question is, how do I actually put in the letters so that they don't run away from me? So one thing is that to write out your word somewhere else and count the letters. This is sort of what I'm going to put and it's going to be in all caps. So I'm writing it out in all caps. Let's count the letters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight, which means half line is going to be right here because the space counts as the letter. So this tells me that right about here is where I want the middle line to be, right? Something like this. And now I can just write out the letters and, and see like how big do I want them? How how thick and all that stuff. And also think about alignment. Like if you throw an imaginary line here, this is sort of where I want the text to go. I don't want it to go way out or get really small. Like the text has to work with your picture. It's got to balance out the picture. So in this case, the text is almost going to be like a stage for my piece. So let's do that. Right, and I can see that my baseline was already too um, too low. So I'm going to add a new baseline. And if I keep holding the pencil, Procreate will make a straight line. Now, if I put my finger down, it'll make it horizontal. Good idea for lettering. <laughs> so let's say these are going to be my letters. And I think I'm going to do it graffiti style. So I'll make them really chunky and overlap them. But for now, this is good enough. And then this is going to be out. So you see, I've got the letters already blocked in and I didn't have to make a lot of decisions because I'm just using the drawing. And then the yo part, let's do another layer. And we're just going to do it nice and dynamic down here with a little exclamation mark, everything pointing different directions because we want to create interest, variety in our pictures um, so that the viewer has a lot to take in. Okay, so something like this. This is a rough sketch. Now let's give our piece some faces and then we'll go clean it up. Now the P is essentially a, a circle, right? Like a sphere. So I've got another tutorial on how to shade spheres and how to draw spheres. Um, I'll link it below the video as well. But just think of this as the ball, right? And your eyes have got to be sitting on top of this ball. So that's why I like to add some guidelines to help me find the place for the face. Never want to be driving blind. You just, you know, help yourself. Uh, I made a new layer because most likely I'll need to move the face. I'll need to adjust the size, something like this. And it's a very happy P. 
So we'll give it a happy mouth. And I like to give my characters some cheeks. So we've got cheeks, maybe a new layer for the other face just while we're working on it. And maybe we give it this kind of face. Now I'm not happy about the positioning of this one. Maybe it's gotten too big, but no worries. This is why we are gonna be just adjusting things, moving them around, you know, but I kind of know where it's gonna go. Beautiful. Okay, our rough sketch is done. Step two, refine sketch. Now, let's say we're happy with this. We can go ahead and merge all the layers. Let's just make sure that once we merge the layers, we won't be able to move stuff around. So really wanna make sure things are where they're gonna be. I think this is pretty good. Uh, another thing is to, you can make the drawing really small and see if everything still works. And I think it does. And then you can sort of make it big again. Now let's merge all the work that we've done so far. Boom. So now we've got the sketch layer and we can drop opacity on it uh, so that it's not as dominant. And now we are gonna draw on top of it our final sketch. So let's do that. Once again, we'll do the piece. Hold the pencil, get the circle, tap, tap this uh, editing menu and move it right where you want it. The other thing that would be good to do, which I you know, often do, is to use the liquify filter here to kind of, you know, make, make it not an exact circle. So even though it's a circle, so I might just want to like squish it down a bit. The trick here is to have a big brush. So maybe squish it down here, you know, so that it's a little, has a little bit more character. Three finger swipe, duplicate, move it over. There we go. Okay. Let's position it exactly where we want it. Should we jump right into the hat? Let's do the hat. The hat is the trickiest part here. So I went on Pinterest and I found a streetwear hat that was, you know, in a similar position to what I wanted to do. And I'm gonna use it as a reference. You know, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. It's already sitting on top of a rounded shape. So I can imagine this is a P. <laughs> and I also am going to use my knowledge of the fact that it's a sphere. So new layer. And I'm gonna sort of wrap the hat around, around the shape like this. And then you can see that it's got like this pointy shape. So let's do that. It's kind of big on top and then it gets narrow here. You know, if you really, really struggle with this part, you could actually just outline it here on a separate layer and bring it over. Um, it's not really cheating because you are using a reference. This is going to be your own illustration, but you are using help of a photographic reference to inform your illustration here. So something like this, and then you can see that here it's like a like an arch, like an upside down U. So we'll do that. And then it kind of gets thicker at the back. Cool. And it has like this little button on top. So anything that can help us with the character is good. Okay. And it's got the stitching on the side. So let's put that in this. I want to say that the hat is kind of pointing that way. And that's the tricky part. That's the tricky part here, but we can do it. It's got a little label. So since we are doing a piece out, I'm going to put a little peace sign right here. Okay, let's check it out. I think this is pretty good, but I'm going to use my liquify 
again in the adjustments menu to sort of shape and mold it a little bit more. Okay, now let's tackle the hand. Another pretty challenging subject is the hand, but what I'm gonna say is that the hand is really, like if you think about it, it's a ball, right? Like I'm actually gonna use my hand as a reference. So I've got a big spherical shape here, two cylinders here, and that's how we are going to draw it. You don't need to overthink it. Just use the world, use the world around us to tell us what's going on. And again, you could actually find a reference image here if you really do struggle with it to help you with drawing the hand, you know? It's no problem. And maybe we'll give it some fingers. Let me clean it up a little bit. I think it'll be cool if it has fingers. So let's do that. This is actually looking really good. I'm happy with it. Looks like a proper peace sign. Ah, nice, beautiful. Okay, this wasn't so hard. <laughs> Sometimes you think it's hard, but it's actually not so hard. Okay, let's do the face, new layer. The face should not be so hard because we already have decided what face it's going to be, where it's gonna go. We just have to like redraw it nicely now. Awesome. And now let's do the letters. Make a new layer. And uh, I'm gonna do this, like I said, in a graffiti style. So I'm gonna like, play around with the shapes, but you can do any kind of lettering that you would want here. So I'm gonna make them chunky. And that kind of goes with a kawaii vibe as well. So like I said, I'm gonna find a marriage between these two styles. I'm gonna make it happen. <laughs> Now the S is the tricky one, so give yourself grace here. If it doesn't come out good right away, just try a few times. You can see that all I'm doing is going over the under layer that I have already created, right? So I'm not really inventing anything, I'm just changing the shapes of the letters a little bit so that they are more interesting, but I'm really using what I have already, like the groundwork that I did before is making it pretty simple. So again, I'm gonna step back and have a look, like my P is looking a little bit small compared to this big letters in the end that I got. So I'm gonna correct it, you know, put something down and then step back and you can see whether it works or not. Like nobody can just do it perfectly from the start. Even if it looks like it, that person has practiced a lot before actually doing it perfect the first time. So let's use the tools that we have. Nice, I like it. I think maybe it's a little bit too wide, but maybe not, it's actually providing a nice balance for our piece to sit on. So I'm gonna go with it and I'm gonna make a new layer and we're gonna do the yo part. It's gonna be a little bit of an overlap, but that's all right. I actually want that. I can erase these pieces and it's gonna be nice. It's gonna add interest to our drawing. Awesome, and our sketch is complete. I think, I think, let's check. Okay, let's do the hat a little bit bigger. There is my hat on its own layer. I just think like it doesn't have enough oomph for what it is. Uh, this is better. I want it to really look like that nice chunky hat. This is actually better. 
So we can always correct things. Awesome. So now let us proceed to the outline. Step three, outline. So we can actually delete the original sketch layer. We don't need it anymore. Or you can just hide it if you want. Let's just hide it. Now, all of these sketch pieces, we can also now merge. So if you pinch your layers together, it turns them into one layer. So our sketch now is all sitting on one layer and you can still do some adjustments here. So uh, now that there's no under layer, I can see like my hat is a little bit out of shape. I want to change it up. Okay. Now we can do the same trick with making this semi-transparent here. And now I'm going to use my inking brush right here. Remember, you can download my brushes below this video. So this is similar to the Studio Pen in Procreate. So if you don't get my brushes, you can use the Studio Pen. Uh, and I'm going to outline it in just black, black color. So I've got, I've got my little color palette set up here. You can see that this brush has a varied width. So the harder you press, the thicker the line is going to be. And I do this on purpose because I am going for the graffiti style here. Um, so how do you know where to make it thin and where to make it thick? The tr uh, if you decide, like I decide that my light comes from here, my shadow is over here, then the thicker side happens on the shadow. And then the thinner is in the front. It doesn't have to be perfect like that, but just, you know, kind of stick to that a little bit and it'll be great. So I'm going to go through the whole drawing and outline, keeping that principle in mind. The left side is going to be thicker. The right side is going to be thinner. And I think I'm going to go for roughly, let's try 24. Okay, so for the face, I'm actually gonna grab the smooth outline, which doesn't have varied width. It's all just uh, same width outline. And on a new layer, I'm gonna do the faces. So let's see, right now I've got it at 30. Mm, that should be good. Let's check it out. I think it might be a little bit too thick for our drawing because we want to maintain the balance. So I might just go down to 27%. I think this is good. So let's just do the face. So happy. Looks so happy. And the other thing that this brush is really good for is for doing the cleanup. So I'm going to make the lines a little bit thinner. And so one thing I'm going to clean up is these little uneven edges. You know, if you're making a product, you really, really want to go through and make sure everything connects nicely and clean, you know. So you see right here is kind of a bumpy line. So I'm going to go to that layer that has the hand and now that my brush is even width I have a lot more control and I can just go and smooth out this little sides right here you don't have to do it for absolutely everything but I know there were a few spots where it didn't like connect properly so especially when I'm making a product this is what I would like go and make sure that it's all cleaned up but for this tutorial, you probably don't want to sit here watching me do this for a long time. So we can just assume that it's all cleaned up and looking beautiful and we can proceed to the color. Step four, coloring. 
So for the coloring, I let's start with the cheeks because then I'm gonna turn off the sketch layer and we won't have the cheeks. So also we'll get a little bit organized here. We'll collect all of the outline layers into one group and we'll call it outline. And then make a new layer. So all the colors will go below the outline. And I've got the color palette already set up. So maybe we'll pick this pink color for the cheeks. We can play around with different colors, but for now I'm gonna go with this peachy pink color and for coloring I'm also going to use my smooth line brush that we saw earlier so make a circle and drag the color to fill it in make a circle and drag the color to fill it in we always want to use shortcuts if we have them now this cheek is not in the same place as this cheek and you know that will bother me so I can grab my selection tool go around it grab the selection tool and just move it you know where I want it to be so get it as right as you can early on so then there's less work later with it let's do the same for the mouth beautiful uh, now I like to put the same color on one layer because later on if I decide this is not pink enough I can just go to hue saturation brightness and I can change you know I can change the colors here so that's just my personal preference see what you like but this is how I like to work and for the second cheek you can actually copy and paste the one that you've already done so you select it you do a three finger swipe, duplicate, and then just move it over like this. Awesome. So now we got the cheeks. And now we can take off the sketch layer completely. We don't actually need it anymore. Okay, now the peas are going to be green. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna drop green into everywhere where the peas are so it's going to be its own layer and it's going to go below the cheeks right so let's get this gr bright green and go through and personally again this is personal preference the way that i like to do it is to just go through outline and then drop the color i know some people like to do it differently well this is the way that i find it works for me so this is what I'm gonna show you. Uh, to me, this is the most fastest way. And then the hat is gonna be this nice gray color. You know, it's a cool hat. These peas are very cool and stylish. So let's do that. Make sure there's no little white gaps like that along the edge. And then we'll add some shading and we'll make it really, really nice. Okay, now the letters. What are we going to do with the letters? Um, let's, so we're going to do it in the spirit of the graffiti style. So there's going to be like this gradation of green, uh, of green and pink basically using the same colors and I'll add a little bit of yellow to give it like a pop to give it some oomph so let's make them pink to start with And then for the exclamation mark, let's make it that gray color again, just for some visual interest, because we always want to tie it all in together. Here we go. I know this doesn't yet look coherent, but we're going to make it, we're going to make it all uh, go well together. So the next thing, you know, this is looking pretty flat. 
what we're gonna do is now we are gonna add some of these gradations like you can see that the colors are not uh, just one flat color they kind of like blend and merge into each other and in procreate there is a very cool thing uh, called the clipping mask so like right now I'm going to work on the green piece and I'm going to make a mask above the green so anything I draw on this layer will not go beyond the boundaries of this green color below so I'm going to grab let's even give it some glow like some yellow color and I'm going to grab my soft brush and you'll see what happens make it pretty big like maybe not that big but pretty big and we're just going to brush on some yellow and here too and then on the shadow side we can brush on the green so I'm going to make another layer make it a clipping mask also and grab this cool green color So instantly, it already looks so much better. Now let's work on the lettering as well. So it's going to be the same kind of trick here. So I'm going to make another layer and I'm going to take the cheeks out actually of that layer because I don't want to accidentally brush any colors on the cheeks. So I'm going to select them. I'm going to do a three finger swipe and I'm going to say cut and paste. So that's going to put the cheeks on its own layer and I can just work on the text. And even with the text, I'm going to separate out the letters because I want to do different kind of um, coloring on them. So I'm taking out the bottom portion, three finger swipe, cut and paste, and now I've got them sitting on different layers. So let's start with the top one. What I want to do is, so another way to, to get this gradated effect is I'm going to show you here. So create a clipping mask, grab my yellow, and I felt that this yellow was too dark. So I'm actually going to go and adjust it a little bit. I'm going to make it lighter right here. Yeah, this is good. And I'm gonna take my smooth brush again and I'm just gonna do like a band of color here like this. I know it looks crazy, but we're gonna use a blur filter and we're gonna make it nice. And the bottom portion, I want it to be green. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. You see how it's staying put? And now let's do the same thing on the yo. And now we're gonna actually let's merge these and we're gonna apply a Gaussian blur filter. So we're gonna come into here and to the adjustments lay, uh, menu. We're gonna say Gaussian blur and just drag the finger up to create this beautiful gradient look it's like instant cool graffiti look so let's do it here on the piece adjustments gush and blur and slide your finger like magic look at this voila and we've got a beautiful graffiti feel to it now so you can keep playing with these piece to keep like Maybe we want to make the bottom a little bit more green. So basically to balance it out with the text uh, and make sure that it's looking how you want it to look. Cool. So now we've got it all balanced out. Let's add a little bit of shadows and highlights to the drawing and then we can add some texture. Now for the highlights, I'm going to go up to the top layer and I'm just going to do them in white. Where's my white? So anywhere there is a light side, I'm going to put a, a, a light sort of band of color and I like to use my smooth outline for that.
Okay, we got the highlights and now let's do the shadows on their own layer. And I'm gonna just use this darker gray and it's gonna look horrible in the beginning, but trust me, it's gonna look way better later and I'll show you why. Uh, now I'm using this dark color because I really wanna see where my shading is gonna go. But then we're gonna do something, we're gonna change a blending mode and it's all gonna look beautiful. And the other thing is that I want one color to work for all areas. So I want the same color to shade with the same color on the green, on the black, everywhere. So you'll see. So it's kind of like a charcoal gray that I'm using. So anywhere there's a shadow, I'm putting it on. So I know this doesn't look good, but we are gonna go ahead and change the blending mode here. So when it comes to blending modes, best thing is to just try different things. So I'm scrolling through the different blending modes, looking at my drawing to see what I like, and we'll find a good one. This one is actually pretty good, the overlay, but let's keep going. Oh, this is really nice. So difference, you see with difference, the, the green is coming out nice and shaded. <laughs> the gray is coming out with nice shading. So I'm gonna continue on this layer with this blending mode. Nice. And now we can also play around with that white shading as well. Let's see if there is a blending mode that might look better. So let's scroll around and see. This is really nice. I really like this. So the overlay is playing with the, with the kind of yellowy colors that we have put underneath. And I think this actually adds even more interest and variety to our shading. So the final, final step that we can do here to make it really look graffiti style is to add some splatters to it. Now I have to give a shout out also to Angela K. I will work on pronouncing her last name correctly. Uh, she does this beautiful uh, art with this splattery style. So I'm gonna borrow a little bit of inspiration from her and I'll link to her website below so you can check it out as well. Uh, and I'm gonna just add some splatter to our piece. So in order to do that, we're gonna use that clipping mask trick again. So make a new layer above, uh, above the color. And we'll grab this brush. Uh, let's see, it's under, it's under spray paints. So we're just gonna grab this brush called Flix. Now Angela has her, her own brush. You can check it out if you wanna like buy a premium brush for this. Um, so I'm just gonna show you the principle here. So let's go with that darker green color or maybe this green, let's just try it and see which color looks better. And we're just gonna add a few little splats. Like you can see here, there's like these dots, graffiti dots. So let's just do that. So on the shadow side, I'm gonna add the darker green splats. And on the light side, I'm gonna add white splats. Ooh, this is really big. So, you know, you don't wanna overdo it, but you also don't wanna be tentative with it. Nice. And we're gonna do the same on lettering. Beautiful. 
this looks so super cute and nice and balanced out with the text i'm very very happy with how it turned out now do you like it let me know if you want to get a t-shirt design with this drawing already on it uh, you can check out the link below the video gosh there's so many links already but anyway check it out below the video and you can get your own uh, peace out t-shirt that was really fun wasn't it and it's really not so hard the main thing to remember about uh, adding lettering to your art is just is that letters are just shapes. They are just part of your drawing. So the same thing that you would balance out your background or any element of your drawing, text is just another element. They are just lines and shapes. Remember to do the trick first with writing out your word, divide, like find your middle line uh, by counting out the letters, then lightly sketch your letters where they are gonna go you know make any adjustments and then now that you know that you're not gonna run off the page that you're gonna have enough space for your whole word and it looks good within the composition then go ahead and outline it in the style that you like i hope you enjoyed drawing this cute piece and remember you can download the brushes the main brushes that i use below this video the link is below this video and if you would like to have your very own t-shirt with this kawaii piece, you know, peace out, then you can do so. The link is also below the video. The main thing about getting better at drawing is to actually do drawing. I get emails all the time that say, hey, can you tell me how to get better at kawaii? How can I be a great artist? And I always tell them the same thing that my art teacher told me very early on, it's, he gave me this quote, if you wanna be a painter, then what you have to do is paint. So if you wanna be a better artist, what you gotta do is make art, you know? But if you wanna have a fast track, so to speak, you've gotta have a well-designed curriculum to your practice, right? Not just draw random things, but things that build on each other, your skills building on each other. And you've got to have proper feedback so that you can correct in every drawing that you do. You've got to correct uh, and grow. And of course, you've got to keep showing up, keep up that motivation and accountability to keep showing up and doing drawing regularly. This is all the stuff that we do in our creative community, the Kawaii Drawing Club. There is already a whole library of the tutorials. My whole kawaii drawing method is there, step by step by step. Tutorials build on each other that you can go through if you decide to join. And the community is there to motivate you, to help you with accountability. We start every week with setting an intent. We also show up and report back on what happened last week. And I cannot tell you how amazing it is when you get, you know, people saying, hey, this is so great. I'm so glad you did this. Or if you're saying, well, I tried to, I don't know, set up my camera. This is what I've been doing recently. So that's on my mind. Um, hey, I tried to set up my camera, but I just don't know it's not working. And there's like five people that are telling you, hey, maybe the cable is wrong. Maybe, you know, have you tried this setting? So it's like very quickly uh, you get through the roadblocks that you may have that otherwise would take you forever trying to Google, trying to find the solution. You know, it's literally your community is a fast track to growing your skills. Specifically, we do a, a new drawing tutorial every month and you get priority access. You also get direct live access to me. Twice a month we have live events, we have a drawing date and we have a mindset talk followed up by a live Q&A. You can ask me anything. I'm in the community all the time, like every day. I live there. I care like about you. I care about your success. So if I see that you're getting stuck, I'm going to turn the earth upside down and find you the solution that you need to continue moving forward. When you are ready, we take the drawings that you have created and we turn them into products so that you can monetize your passion, so that you can be rewarded 
for the work that you do. You know, how amazing. Like, so this drawing that we just did today is now a product in my shop uh, that somebody can buy. So it literally is like a holistic system. Uh, so you do your passion, you do your truth, you turn it into a product and you actually improve somebody's day because they want to wear it. it. It makes their life better. It's a beautiful, beautiful cycle. So if this sounds interesting to you, I really invite you to join our community. Everybody who joins, they say, oh my goodness, I found my tribe. You know, this, this is the type of feeling that our members get instantly. And you can try it absolutely risk-free for seven days. Give it a go. Check it out. The link is below the video. KawaiiDrawingClub.com I really hope to see you there. And no matter what, continue drawing, continue creating, continue sharing your art. And I will see you soon.